According to reports, Jay Leno is moving back to The Tonight Show, the 10 o'clock Leno experiment on NBC, a failure. What's next for Jay? What's next for Conan? The census controversy, a large ethnic group upset about what they're called in the official document. If anything's going to be politically correct, shouldn't it be the census? Well, the weather's never sounded like this. Filter forecast, lie, 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 lie. On the filter forefront, here's the big four stories of the day and off the top. A highly anticipated, emotionally charged trial will begin on Monday, and you'll have a chance to see it. For the first time in the Ninth Circuit, the nine Western states will be shown to the public the topic, Prop 8, same-sex marriage. California Supreme Court has upheld Prop 8 banning same-sex marriage as a valid amendment of the state constitution. Now it's in federal court based on constitutional challenges. The proceedings will be videotaped, turned around, and quickly played back in its entirety on YouTube. Supporters of Prop 8 don't like it, claiming witnesses will be intimidated testifying in front of millions of people. Our contributors tonight joining us via Skype, Doctor of Social Ethics Charlotte Laws, and Emmy Award-winning journalist David Reese. David, I'll start with you. Bottom line, is this a good idea? Absolutely. Uh, we need a lot more of this. I think the reason we haven't seen more of this before is because of what we in the business call the OJ backlash. You know, when the OJ trial was televised, it turned into a circus, and I think everyone can agree on that. And so judges have been very reluctant to allow cameras in their courtroom to prevent a repeat of that. But the problem is that the public really needs to see what goes on in courtrooms. There's a lot, huge segment of the population that really don't understand legal issues, don't understand a lot of the um, legal ramifications of what comes out of court cases. This this affects all of us, and uh, here in California, certainly I think everyone in the state has a vested interest in the outcome of this lawsuit. It's certainly a very contentious issue. It's been on the ballot more than once. It probably will be again based on the outcome of this case. So I think it's a great idea. I'm a little bit confused about why the judges don't want to just televise it, uh, but I think they want to have control, and so I think this yeah. is a good first step. And I think if this goes well, hopefully we'll see more of this in the future. Well, that's what the judge said. He wanted to control it. The court wanted to control it, and the court could pull the plug on it at any point. But Charlotte, do you think witnesses would be intimidated testifying? I think that some might, and so I do agree with the time delay and allowing people to be blacked out if they wish to be. But I agree with David that transparency is extremely important, unless you're talking about the security of the nation. And I think that having it on YouTube is actually a really good idea, too, because I think it may get young people involved and interested in government and public policy. And I think it's good to televise this particular case because this may set a precedent for the rest of the country. And I think people throughout this nation are very interested not only in the result, but also the process of how we arrive at that result. So I think it's a very good decision. All right, both of you in agreement on our first topic. I am, but I want to add one thing, Go and ahead. that is that if uh, this concern about people being intimidated right. to testify because you're going to be on television right. or it's going to be seen in public, listen, if you don't have the balls to walk out and say something in court that you wouldn't say in public, you shouldn't be in court on the stand to begin with. Yeah, but, but, if, but if you're called to testify, you're under oath, and, you know, you've got yeah, to say Yeah, but you it. should be able to tell the truth. Well, I, I, maybe it's just because we're on television and it doesn't intimidate me, but I'm sorry, being being called to court is far more intimidating to me than it being on television is. All right, let's move on. Put criminals in prison or put kids in college? That's a simple question. What's more important? The governor says privatize the prisons, have private companies run them, or at the very least supply them with guards, doctors, teachers, and other employees. Then use the savings and pump them into public universities. Some like the idea, some don't. Assembly Speaker Karen Bass of Los Angeles wonders why California incarcerates more people than any other state. Perhaps because California is a giant state and it has more criminals. Charlotte, do you like this idea and is it doable? You know, I think that a pilot program makes sense. About half the states in this country already have some sort of privatization for prisons, and usually it's for minimum security prisons. But I think the things to look at is, one, is it going to save us money? And studies show that it does save about 5 to 15 percent in privatized prisons. And secondly, is the quality of care going to be good enough? And there actually is supposedly a little bit of a reduced quality of care in the privatized facilities. And the third thing is, is the bottom line going to predominate the decision-making for this private company, or are they going to worry about society as a whole? Because they may see the prisoners as customers and want to retain them as long as possible in order to get as much money as possible. 
So those are the kind of things to look at, but I do think a pilot program makes sense. But my real solution is to export prisoners from California to Alabama. And the reason I say that is because we spend $49,000 per year per prisoner. Alabama, Alabama spends $14,000 per year per prisoner. And so we could give them $20,000 per prisoner. They'd make a little profit. We'd save money. We would have no more prisoners in California. Oh, I it bet would be a Al Alabama would just love that. Yeah, I'm not so sure Alabama would go, this is a great idea. <laughs> David? Well, you know, I think this is a great idea, but the problem is it's never going to happen. And that's the sad reality about California government and the way our budgets are done. You know, you want to go up against the prison guards union? They're one of the most powerful unions in the state. They're never going to go for this. And that's the problem with really the way our government works. Our governing body and our uh, legislators are really hamstrung because so many times we have gone in, we the voters, and have legislated how our money is going to be spent. So their hands are tied. Um, I do think it makes perfect sense. We should spend more money investing in education for people because I think study after study has shown it keeps them out of prison. So we should invest in the front end rather than paying more on the back end. But do, do I think it'll ever really happen? I doubt it. I, I think a constitutional amendment is not a good idea because you're right, David, it decreases flexibility. And down the road, we may decide we want to put in a voucher system. We may want to privatize education, and we don't want to tie our hands and have to spend a certain amount of money on education in order to spend less money on prisons and more money on education. And that makes it less flexible for everybody. Well, certainly agree. at this time where Arnold Schwarzenegger is in his final year in office, perhaps a bit of posturing, trying to gain some public support.